Good evening and welcome to Carte Blanche Outdoors. Amidst the darkness, the suffering and poverty of Africa, South Africa is still regarded as a beacon of hope to the continent. Small pockets of success are evidenced in the more glamorous suburbs of Johannesburg like this. It is in these suburbs that prosperity is rife. A nuclear family still exists and the hope of a nation is built. Which is why this story will come as such a shock. Despite a warm and loving family, an enriched childhood and a privileged education, James Murray is causing ripples in the otherwise peaceful suburb of Parktown North. We sent in our special investigators. So here we are in a quiet suburban town in Johannesburg where prosperity is rife and the nuclear family still exists. We're here to investigate an enigma, the enigma being James Murray. Let's see what's happening. We're waiting outside the house here, hoping to do further investigation. So we are here in the Murray household and um, we have the great privilege of having Andrew Murray with us, James's younger brother, uh, as we hope to investigate the situation further. So Andrew, there's been a lot of talk about you or a lot about James being a fairly aggressive personality, a fairly dangerous individual to society and um, I was wondering what you want, you could shed, if you could shed any light on these rumours, for want of a better word. Well, yeah, there was, there was one time where we went away for a lovely uh, fishing weekend. Peaceful. Peaceful, yeah. very relaxing, just a getaway place, just to, just to become one as a family. Mm. And unfortunately, James didn't see it in the same way that we did. How I, so? Well, I, I sense from the beginning when we arrived at this this wonderful resort that there was a little bit of tension, anxiety, maybe a bit of jealousy, in fact, on me from James. Um, we were just wandering around in the mellow, lush vegetation of the forest and we were cutting down fruit and nuts from the tree. I looked around and James had a machete held high in the air. And before I could say anything, he struck me in the arm really, really hard. And uh, I, I presume there was sort of savage in injury from it. There was blood, projectile blood. It, it sounds everywhere like a completely unprovoked attack. Like deep-seated sort of hatred, even. I don't know. I just, it really, it just shook me. Is there, is there a scar that we can, um, perhaps we can zoom in on it, or? Yeah, there's a very big scar on my arm over there. Oh wow! See. Yes, it's exceptionally noticeable. The the doctor actually sewed it up quite nicely. It used to run from about here to about there. Wow. Struck so me. presumably your arm was suspended, was yeah, hanging well, off. Well, well actually my whole, my whole muscle was hanging out. Oh. So I, my mum actually had to put it back inside And, and what did my James arm. do? Is it a, in response to that sort of... He laughed. He, did he, he laughed. He laughed. I don't know. It was sort of a satanic laugh. Oh. It, it actually made the situation a lot worse. And on, in the whole, on the journey on the way back to the hospital with this gushing arm with all the blood coming out, I just saw James looking over to me in the car 
as if to say that, that I'm proud of what, what was I've there, done. Did you ever get the feeling that he had regret? And I, and I say regret in the sense that he didn't finish the job. Oh, I see. Um, I don't know. He seemed pretty satisfied with the wound that he created. It was fairly large as well. So I, I want to ask you this question. Proud of it. In response to this act, was, was that an isolated event? Or were there other... Were there other events? Well, that ever, you know, other malicious attacks. After that event, I, I sort of had, had my suspicions of James. Mm. So I, I had to step up my game. Mm. And there was one day where I was, I was um, in the bathroom, making, a sh making, a, making a poo <laughs> on the toilet. <laughs> and um, well, it was nice, obviously, as always. And you. When you're doing something like that, you don't really think about what's going on well, around you. Well, you let your guard down. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You just sort of, you're in your zone, and that's it. It's like a child sort of thing. It's wonderful. But anyway, I just was doing it, and then I saw this hand come through with an elastic. And he struck me in the side of my arm, sort of here, mm. with a thingy, those paper things. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bloody hard. And there were... Um, Childish as well. Yeah, childish, very, yeah. very, very childish. And this was, a, he was about 15 at the time. So, yeah, I lost my temper straight away. And I knew, I knew in my mind that I, that I had to kill him. I had to. I just knew that that was the only way. I was so angry at the time. Yeah. So I, um. But you, you didn't kill him. No, I tried. <laughs> And he ran to the pool, in fact. Yeah. You know when you do that stupid... Yeah, where you go on either side of, and... Yeah, yeah. So you never got him. I never got him in the end. But I did. And then he eventually stopped that. I don't know why. Because it worked bloody well. It pissed me off even more. Mm -hmm. So I grabbed every single knife in the kitchen that I could find. The, the steak knives. And I threw them at him. He, he ran into my mum's studio. And I threw them all at him. And five of which went straight through my mum's canvas painting. Which she just finished. So that wasn't very, very good. And they obviously caused some, some yeah, unrest there was, in the family. There was very uproar. There was a lot of uproar. Well, Andrew, I must thank you for your words. Oh, it's my pleasure. Yeah, and I just um, all the best for the future. Thank you. Cool. So given that uh, James is from such a loving family, as we've already heard from Andrew, we have to ask the question, where has it all gone so horribly wrong? We're here at James's room, and I think it's time to investigate further. At face value, it appears to be just as we've seen. Loving and warm. James, the ever the engineer, designing bridges. Reading in his spare time, Alice in Wonderland. And uh, even further evidence of a peaceful childhood. Flopsy and this little one, <laughs> and this one. He seems to have a great fondness for reading. Philip Pullman, J.K. Rowling, just some of the great childhood uh, authors and authoresses of our time. But let's look further. One always uses the underside of the bed as a potential. There's nothing there. I know from my personal experience. And here we go. What have we found? It's a hustler. If we look just at a sort of random page, willy-nilly, you can see the kind of thing, gypsy lust. This is what we're looking at. So that explains a lot there. <sighs> Pornography is just one of the things. Let's look through his drawers. And again, at face value, there appears to be nothing going on. A couple of forms, a glasses case, and... Um, Drugs. So that'll do it as well. Maybe there's more as well in the fiction. Fiction has been said to have a thing. Dan Brown, that's uh, controversial in his own right. So we are here with James's parents, Michael and Catherine, as we investigate further into the enigma that is James Murray. And um, we're going to probe a couple of deep questions here. Michael, James, difficult bringing him up. 
Any stories from his sort of childhood? I, I can really start with the first, uh, the very first night, which was um, the most extraordinary nightmare of my life. Um, I decided that I was going to be a model of a father, and uh, so the first night that he came home from the hospital, um, I said to Catherine, "You go to bed. I'll do. I'll look after him entirely." And I fully expected to have him done and dusted and put in his cot and that I'd have a good night's sleep well. It didn't work out like that at all. The one thing that James had more than any of the other children was legs that moved like a turtle at sort of high speed. It was like a, a, a turtle on, on steroids. The legs sort of moved frantically in every direction and that, that was the first thing that I remember as Turtles I was, are quite slow. Anyway. Yes, but, but this one was on steroids. Um, and um, he, uh, I, I, you know, he did the usual things that babies do in terms of weeing and stuff, and that that was to be expected. So I changed the nappy once, and then twice, and then uh, I think it must have been the third or fourth time, I was alarmed by what was uh, nothing less than an eruption, a projectile poo that sort of <laughs> shot across the room and actually hit the wall on the opposite side of the room. And that, that really was, was quite a remarkable experience for me. And uh, just the whole, I, I barely slept the whole night, that, that first night. And uh, this I thought would be life with a child and I could hardly imagine that I could survive. So, so basically it was very difficult from day uh, one. My, my word, no, James was uh, from day one very difficult, but after that I'm afraid <laughs> this is going to disappoint you. But he actually then transformed into... <laughs> <laughs> into a much more manageable and thoroughly, thoroughly uh, manageable child. So, so the first night was a nightmare. Well, and uh, there was no sort of other events shortly after that. Nothing crying or anything like that. Excessively. No, no excessive crying. He was actually quite considerate. So I haven't got anything dreadful on that front to tell. He was considerate. That I mean, he used to wake up uh, on is his it own. Po is it possible? Yeah, you're, you're looking a, for from, nasty things from, a, from an <laughs> early age that he was he was just pulling the wool over your eyes. I he think was, that's was, look. I mean, that subsequently became the case, absolutely, because you know there was this model of a child which turned into a complete monster at about what was it, eighteen? Sixteen. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, thank you. If, if this is your chance to say any sort of happy birthday wishes or anything for him, James, he, watching, so. uh, James, you've been the most brilliant son, you really have, a, a blessing in every way and um, of, of course there have been challenges and, but we've, we've really appreciated your openness and honesty and um, your love frankly, yeah, really really brilliant brilliant child and, and uh, so proud of you with what you've done at university and, and everything and so we love you very much and, and just wish you all the very best. Happy birthday my boy. Happy birthday. So we're here with uh, Louisa Murray and Andrew, James's siblings. Uh, Louisa's the youngest of the family, and um, Louisa, I'm sorry to have to, to put you through this again. I know it's obviously been a, a tough road, but um, I'm talking now, obviously, about how James used to sort of terrorise you with this game. Fairyland, mm -hmm. and um, I mean, tell us what you can sort of remember. I, I assume you've well, blocked a lot of it out, but it was just the, probably the worst days of my life. They'd just stand on the bed and sort of shake the blanket, and it would really, it would really, really scare me. And I thought they were really gone, and it really wasn't. So they what they hid themselves, and yes, they would hide themselves, and then I wouldn't know where they had gone, uh, and they would pretend that they were being killed and. Gone to the slaughtered. You, you said slaughtered. You, well, you you said to me off slaughtered. camera that, that the the way it worked was that they told you you had to concentrate really hard. Yes. And that if, if yeah. you made a mistake, it would send them yes, away. Yes. If I didn't concentrate, that they would go to the land of. So <coughs> presumably, it was some form of sort of almost mental bullying. Yes, it was horrible. The, there was a, so a specific thing that she had to say. Um, <laughs> she had to say nanny, nanny, poof, and if she didn't do that in the correct manner, we would get sent to the land of bad people, bad boys, big bad yeah. boys actually, 
we would we would we would get slaughtered and just ripped limb from limb. And and Weza, um yeah. I mean when this when this happened. Sorry. I'm so sorry. When this when this happened, um I mean did you sort of live with this for quite a while afterwards or were you able to get over it? Yeah no, to this day I'm still completely disturbed. I'm just torn. It's just I cannot believe that they that all of you could just be so I mean well, I mean, you're not laughing at me, because obviously no, no. I wasn't involved here. Um, well, Riza, I, I thank you for your time. No. And uh, sorry, guys, I, I'm so sorry. I offer you the opportunity I'm so now. Sorry, I'm so sorry. I offer you the chance now to um, mm. send your wishes, your best wishes to James on his yeah. train first. <laughs> Happy birthday, James. Uh, sorry I can't be there. I'm in the Okavango now with Dad, so sorry. No. Happy birthday, James. I hope you have a really nice day and that it was everything that you wanted. And just want to let you know that to this day I'm very distraught about the day <laughs> of you teasing me and torturing me. We are now here with uh, Ali, Andrew's girlfriend, and uh, we're going to see her take on, you know, take on things. She's sort of recently been come part of the family and she's been able to see the inner workings of the Murray household. Ali, as a family, it's a loving one. Yes. It's a gracious one. There's no, there's sort of no issues no. that you've been able to detect. And um, James, when he's around you, around the family, he's how normal. Does he normal. No. normal. When they're around family, it's fine. But mm. well, when we're alone, it's a different story. Oh, and you, you say like you take it you've had one-on-one -on -one time with him. Oh yes. Um, I was here first time actually meeting James. I came here for um, his twenty-first. It was a dinner. And I was about to leave. I was going to go fetch my um, jersey and my cell phone from um, Andrew's room. And I went in by myself. And I heard someone coming in behind me. I thought it was Andrew to come say goodbye. But I turned around and it was James. And um, he was there. I think he was a bit out of sorts, had a one too many, or I don't know. But he proceeded to come on to me. And I, I was very scared. I didn't know what to do. It, it was just completely different to how he acts when you know, we're around the family. Obviously, Andrew, I, I take it, that would have shaken you. I was, just, I was so scared to tell Andrew, I didn't know what to say. Yeah. I just, you know, but I had to because I was just, you know, and that's why I'm telling you guys. Well, I'm, I'm very sorry, I'm very sorry for your sufferings in that regard. Okay. Um, Thank you. And I'll offer you the chance to uh, sort of wish him well, first 21st. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, James. I'm sorry I couldn't come and be so. I hope you have so much fun. I hope your day is amazing. A cut man, you always. James, hope you're having a fantastic 21st. And just from me and all of the Car Blanche team, everything of the best for the future. And uh, we'll see you on the show one day, hopefully, not causing too many ripples. Cheers now. <laughs>